All right, we're going to officially say it's 3 o'clock. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Was it properly notified? Am I, am I, it's, maybe it's not, it's not loud. Yeah, it's good for online. Okay. Uh, you might want to turn it up so Dan can hear me. I think you like to have it louder in the room, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me okay, everyone? Are we good? Can you hear me good? All right. Um, all right. Agenda. We have a 16 point agenda. I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Gentis, second by McGuire. Any questions, concerns, or discussion on the agenda? Mr. Carroll? My, my iPad didn't sync, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can get it to sync properly. A little help right now. Okay. You want to go ahead and vote on the, let's go ahead and vote uh, on the agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. You want me to give you a second? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so approval of the March 6, 2023 minutes. I looked at them and I, I was online though. Would someone yeah. like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 6. Do I have a second? Second by Fleming. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, minutes are approved. In person. I did. Yeah, yeah, I think you were here. I just remembered because I, I had the same problem. But oh, sure. Yes. Did you say a 16 point agenda? Yeah, I did. That's what we have. Yeah. We've only got about eight here. And you mean for as far as items in your folder? Yeah. And that's because there aren't there aren't items in the folder for anything other than the zoning petitions today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the rest is just discussion. And it's it's all you know like the STR the short term rental stuff yeah. is all in the folder yeah. from previous so that I don't have to keep uploading it into every new meeting folder. Okay, all right. So that brings us to the item five zoning petition, starting with the Philip petition. In the audience is Mr. Tom Phillips. What Mr. Phillips is doing is selling more land to his neighbor, which is his daughter. So she can put solar panels up. The piece that's getting split off from his land to hers is added, is what's being rezoned to egg residential. Are they in the room? No, I'm right back there. Right there? Okay. Um, all right, so let's get this on the floor then for discussion. Uh, uh, I'll move to approve. Have a motion? Second. And second? <clears throat> all right, discussion. Um, does anyone have any questions for? The representative, or the owner, the landowner, Mr. Carroll, go ahead. Yeah, I. It says zero acres. I'm trying to understand right. what's going on with that. Well, I didn't fill that part in because we didn't know for sure exactly at the time of the application. But as you look at the CSM that was attached to it, you can see the new CSM and the acreage total. In green there. Sideways, it's hard to read. So the total lots for lot one of the CSM that's being created is 13.14. Okay. That's the total the new CSM will be. John, can you put that on the screen? No. Thank you. Yeah, I'd rather not approve something if I don't even know the acreage. Okay. <clears throat> we got it. Here. So if you go to page. Two, three. Page five, it shows lot one with 13.14 acres. If you go to the next one, it gives you the actual. <coughs> so the one lot becomes 13.14 and then the other parcel becomes. Tom has more that's to the north of it. And then if you Go back to the picture. When you go to the upper of the screen, that's where Tom's house is at. Part of Tom's land here. This is part of Tom's land down here. This is the daughter's land. This right here, since it's separate, it's going to be added to the daughter's land. 
So this will be 13 acres plus. Brother. Todd, do you know offhand is it five and seven or? Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, uh, it also mentions solar array, but I mean, we don't really care about that, do we? That's independent of how it's zoned, isn't it? It needs to be correctly zoned and egg forestry non-conforming doesn't allow structures. Oh. Is that right? So that's yeah, right. I think it's right because I'm the zoning guy, yeah. <laughs> so then non-conforming you can't build on. That's why we come to the zoning. Otherwise, everyone just be splitting off land and not rezoning. Okay, so if it's if it's zoned uh, residential. ag residential, they can. Right. So, thanks. Any other questions? Are you satisfied with? Okay. All right. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right. You have your your zone. All right. That brings us to yep. Uh, thank you for coming. That brings you to item B. Hawk, hack, hack, hawk, hack, hack, hack petition. Yeah. I was afraid to say the last name's wrong. Right. Um, do you want to go ahead and give a brief description, then we'll get it on the floor? Uh, so since everyone wants to see it on the screen, keep on scrolling up there. So Mr. Hack owns pretty much all this land over here. There's a piece that's on the opposite side of the road. So he wants to split that off. So that would need to be rezoned to ag residential. And it, in the description says sell as a buildable lot as ag residential, ag residential, be a 12 acre lot. So why don't we go ahead and get this on the floor for discussion? So I make the motion. Motion by Carol. I'll second. Second by Fleming. All right. Discussion, questions. Kind of makes sense. It's weird having a small little lot across the road. Does anyone have any questions, concerns for the owners or for Mr. Bindle? If not, I will call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, have their approval. That brings us to the Milford petition. So Mr. Milford is going to separate out two plus acres here for his house garage and then selling the rest of his land to his sons. So basically he just needs to rezone to two acres for his residential lot. Okay. Can we get this on the floor for discussion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Fleming. I'll second. Second by Gentis. Um, so are the, are the property owners in the room for this one? No, he didn't want to. Okay. You always I'm, ask about that. I have the septic. That's the yeah. only question I always have is we just want to make sure. Oh, Fleming and Jensen. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have any questions. This has come, become fairly common as we've talked about. Yeah. Any questions for Mr. Bindle? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that one is approved. I say the next one, Rucker, Roker? Yes, Roker. 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 So this is the map that he had dropped off at our office. This is facing north, Highway 130. There is a house and some land here. There's a barn and some land on this side. This is the only thing that's on this side of the road. Everything else goes this way to the west, this way to the north. He bought the land, I think it's 120 acres. He wants to separate out the house. He basically has no use for the land that's across the road, so that's going to be 
will not see us in them. The only thing that's in debate right now is it's right at five acres. So when we applied for it to be R2, but they're going to add more land to it because it's got the barn, they can add animal units to it. So now he wants to add a little bit more land to it. It's maybe a proposal. He asked the day this morning. So should we even be approving this now? Should we just wait until they know what they're doing? I would say probably best thing to wait to find out for sure. Yeah. I mean, you can approve it for R2, but if he's going to go to a residential, then you'd have to change then it. Then you would have to repost it or whatever. So. so what should we do? Make a motion to table this? Or postpone? Make it postpone. 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 Yeah, postpone. Why don't we to postpone indefinitely until they get the right Get the what? Or, Todd, are you doing the CSM or? Okay, and they're not present here today. No. Okay, so would someone like to make a motion yes. to, to, postpone to postpone indefinitely? Indefinitely. I'll second. All right. Any? Can we discuss those? Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right. That would bring us to the final one: the continued Oliver Stanky. Thank you. Petition. <laughs> All these names today. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Mike. So this is one from several months ago. I actually think, was it back in January or is it last month of the year? Just giving the description and then we brought it up to discuss. So the current lot that we had mapped out was basically this square here. At some time, there was a description that was recorded that deals with this line here and all this. There was a neighbor, Mr. Grimm, that was questioning the lot lines for sure where it was. Since the meeting, they hired the county surveyor. I went out there, we did the mapping. So the only difference between that is that they actually found out that this here is the actual pen. This here is actually owned by Thank you. So this lot description here in blue is what's being proposed to be rezoned. Uh, sort of. The past plat was kind of vague, so. So now we're correcting everything to what the actual survey is. Right. There's so going to be quick claims back and forth between Thank you, Oliver. Back and forth and all that stuff, right. but it'll be all corrected after approving it. Back and forth and all that. And what is there in blue is what's being rezoned. Okay. So the original, the rezone application is in a previous folder, isn't it? Because it's correct. This meeting. What, okay. Where is that at? So we can look at it. It would be from the last meeting. I, was it the last meeting or the meeting before? Meeting before. So yeah, that would have been two meetings before. January? Two meetings. So they're asking to rezone, just to refresh our memory, they're asking to rezone it to? R2. R2. This lot here is 2.12 acres. And it was before it was? Egg forestry. Egg forestry, and now they want to do R2. The original small square lot was actually grandfathered in, adding more land to it was the issue where they went to the rezoning part. Okay. So it's all resolved. Both parties are satisfied with how it's all working. Okay. Okay. Why don't we make a motion to get this on the floor? I'll move. I'll second. All right. So questions. Yes. I I'd like to see the initial petition. I have I, I I'm still not clear on it's in January's folder. Uh, All over. All over. Um, An odd lot line, isn't it? Yeah. And the actual acreage is? 2.01. I'm sorry, 2.01. Yeah, it's written on the side of that. It says it on the side. There. No. Yeah. 
Any other questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that's approved. Yay. All right, so that brings us to item number six, Ash Creek Forest Future Needs. Um, did I didn't need to move anything around in the agenda for people that are in the room at all? I can just keep going right down the line. Okay. Just didn't know if you wanted me to bump anything up. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to Rebecca. Um, they're starting the fire season, so she'll get back to me at some point. That's the Ash Creek? Yeah. Okay. But um, we, you were asking a dollar amount. There's two, $2,371 $2, approximately in that account. 2000 what? 371 Tammy Chapman. 371 in the Ash Creek Fund. Yep. Um, Kent checked on track. We can rent a tractor more. Nothing bad about this tractor. He used it last year, and the back tires are a little, yeah, they're still not really good. So there's some places he may not get to because it's, because want to slide off the hill. But okay, yeah, let's avoid yeah. that, please. Yeah. But most of it is was mobile. Right? Okay. Because I'm assuming that we're willing to be out there mowing sometime in May. Yeah. Okay. He, he either Kent or Derek will do it. Okay. Um, and and how much was the rental going to cost? Oh, I, I wrote it down. I left it downstairs. And did you guys ask? Did you get bids? No. On that? No, we didn't. But it's like last time we had bids, it was like five hundred dollars a mowing. That was several years ago. Mowing all the trails and stuff. Plus any extra mowing is extra. So I think it was like two hundred. Fifty dollars a day to rent this mower, and who is this rental from? Simpsons. Three Do we want? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You go ahead. You rent it three times usually. Is that what you said last May? I usually, depending on the weather. Yeah, at least twice, but ideally three times. Correct. Throughout the season. Um, I, I'm I'm going to jump here and think that Mr. Carroll is going to say that we we probably should try to get some bids just to make sure that we're getting. I'm not sure who will let us rent equipment. I mean, I guess there's at least one other place that would rent that rents. You know, equipment. I, I can send something to homesteaders asking what it would cost to rent. Yeah. Why don't you do that just to be because we don't want to just assume that Simpsons is the best price or whatever. So um but so just to catch the staff up, we used to actually put out for bids having someone bid doing the mowing themselves. Um and it was it was challenging to find people who are, who want to do that, and so then last year, two years, two years now, yeah, because Kenny did it mm -hmm. at least one, if not two years. We decided so, so a couple of years ago, we decided it was um, easier to just do the mowing ourselves and rent the equipment for a day when we need it. Um, so, did, didn't we buy a tractor for the fairground though? Yeah, yeah so. but I don't. So, is there is there equipment within the county that we can borrow? I don't understand why we can't use that. Well, I don't know what kind of tractor it is and what size. I'd have to. Why well, don't you put that? Okay, so let's find that out first, because if that's a possibility, obviously that makes the most sense to use equipment we already have, and if not, get just get prices from both Simpsons and okay. And can I, I don't think is there anyone else who rents equipment in the area? I mean, close, we don't want to go all the way to Brokwa. By. Yeah, we don't want no, to. No, because you'd have to. You have to haul. We have to haul it out. We'd have to pay staff drive it out time, there. and that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Can I ask two questions? Yep. Go ahead. Doesn't the county mow the roadsides with the mower? Correct, but you pay big bucks to have the highway shop. You, I mean, I guess you could ask them for their bids, or but they won't. They won't. Yeah. And we've tried that. We we've that had that. Their budget is different. That's why we have to pay them. I mean, for that. Trust me, we, the bike trail, the Pine River Trail, we it's been expensive. It was when we the count the when the parks did it years ago with the highway department. It was like fifteen hundred. This is several years ago, fifteen hundred dollars a mowing or something like that. So, so although that was a different highway commissioner, but that was still their policy. You pay for their people. You pay for their. Comp time, their comp time, their overtime, their vacation time, their sick leave time, that's all put in an extra fee onto what you pay them per hour. Plus, I'm just going to say, because like the maintenance person here is not going to go out and work on East Hall, not for extra money, just part of the It's just the way that it's the way the highway shop works. They've done this for years. So, well, maybe we should talk to the highway department about I'm just thinking that the comp. That, it does seem strange to me that they're but, we're charging ourselves. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, it's I the way they've done it in road work that they 
have to pay for paving and all the equipment and stuff. But nope, it's the way we, we used to have them do things on the Pine River Trail, and it was. I do remember that it was a lot of money. Um, okay, yep. and then the five hundred dollars was one time. Is that what you said? Correct. Yeah, bit. Okay, that's what I meant. And that was Don Lamas. How many years ago? And of course, he's not going to do it anymore. And right. Um. So okay, I'll I'll get that for the next. We'll still have time because we won't be mowing first part of May. Yeah, I do think we should look into the fair though. The equipment yep, that's going around. Um, because I'm pretty sure we just bought them a tractor. Right, but it depends if it's the right size and the right. more, then we have to have the right kind of more. We'd have to, right, so yeah. find out. Okay. Yep. And there's one more thing just to let you know. Um, I've been asked by um, Natural Resources Conservation Service and the State Department of Ag, they do a, um, they have a soils training and we've got a soil pit out at the, on, on Ash Creek and they'll pay to clean it up it out but they would um, like to use that again for training what's a soil pit <laughs> it's basically i mean i assume it sounds like a pit of soil but but it's, why is it there a hole in the ground that they can go and they can look at the soil profile all the way down to oh, so it's something we purposely put there yes okay we've used we've, curious. no we've used <laughs> we used to use it for our field days conservation field days it's not an open hole it is but it's not a it's like on the side it's like a drop off on the hill it's been there for no one's fallen in it. No one's fallen in it. It's a place where nobody, yeah. Okay. Like all marks. Well, <laughs> well, no, I'm just, we have. Well, when this is done, we'll go back out. I'll have Kent and T Derek go out and just put a little some fence posts and some. Yeah, it's been there like for cover it. It's been there for as long as I've been with the county. So. There's yeah, it's plenty probably of other falling hazards out there too. It's true. That's true. But this would be a hole we put there on purpose, though, and I think it, that's different if someone falls in it versus if they fall yeah. off a cliff. Right? We've, we've got fence posts out at the conservation building, so I'll tell Derek and Kenny, Ken, or Ken, not Kenny, yeah, Ken, no, right. to, to go out and we'll, okay. we've got to we'll put something there. And Okay, that sounds good. How are the trail markers holding up? As far as I know, good. Okay, yeah, I was going to head out there and check on everything, but I haven't, it's, I haven't, it's been a while. Um, okay, anything else on Ash Creek? Any questions from anyone? All right, moving on to cost share contracts. There is none this month, so. All right, so we're good there. All right, that brings us to short-term rentals. So I will start by updating all of you on what I have got accomplished this month. So I sent letters to all of the townships plus um, by Boaz, Casanova, Lone Rock, Viola, um, Richland Center. Yuba. So all the municipalities and all of the uh, townships, I sent a letter. Uh, it was essentially what we had talked about. I'll just briefly read it here for those online. Richland County Land and Zoning Committee has been discussing short-term rentals and whether or not the county should consider an ordinance with some basic good neighbor policies to balance the need for tourist housing and attraction with those of full-time residents. We would like input from the townships that are county zoned as well as townships and municipalities that have their own zoning. The committee would appreciate it if you could answer the following questions and return the survey to Melissa Luck, blah, 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 all my contact. Um, so the questions were, do you currently have any ordinances relating to short-term rentals? Do you require a conditional use permit or any other permit for short-term rentals? If not, do you have any plans to implement an ordinance or CUP? Excuse me. Have you had any issues related to short-term rentals raised at a meeting or conveyed to you by citizens? And would you be interested in attending a land and zoning meeting to discuss possible ordinance language or share what ordinance or CUP process that you have. We appreciate your time and consideration, land and zoning. So I got responses back from, and I sent that on March 14th. So three weeks ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So far I have gotten, I'm playing phone tag with the Marshall Township Chair. Um, I spoke with um, Richland Town, one of the supervisors, the town chair apparently is stepping down. So he passed it on to one of the other supervisors. Um, I, I was asked to attend the Richwood town meeting next Monday to, to answer any questions and to talk about it. And I got an email from Westford Township. Um, so I'm still, so everyone I've spoken to, so of the five people that I've either spoken to or, have, or wrote me back an email, they, um, several of them said that the tourism, Richland County, the Richland Center Tourism, Marty, um, Richards has stopped in and they've talked about the ordinance 
writing an ordinance, but that has strictly to do with the, the room tax. There's really, it, it really doesn't encompass any kind of policy about having, um, he did send me a copy of it, um, and it really only talks about in implementing the room tax and how you collect it and who, who's allowed to and blah, blah, blah. Um, that would be Westford Township told me that he's been there and they're working on one. And Mar I have an email from Marty um, to tell you what he said. Let's see. I believe he told me that he has like two or three townships that are in the process of talking about. Um, here we go. Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he, he, Marty stopped in at Forest Township also, and it, it looks like our chair and supervisor are gonna are gonna write up something to start doing a room tax. Tax, yeah. So it sounds like they're making their way through the townships, um, but that's separate from what we're talking about because we, we as a county cannot implement a room tax. But, just to be clear, but if they list the ones, we could work together, know who right. that is, right? Right. Um, so okay, so that's where that is. I think I'll give it another you know, this next month to see if I hear from more of them and then we'll decide, you know, at what point we want to start bringing them in for conversations. Um, I did contact the sheriff's department to find out if there have been complaints about Airbnbs in our county. And he said, nope, they couldn't think of any incident. I mean, they have no way to search in their database for, you know, vacation rental complaint. <laughs> you know, it's a noise complaint or it's a something else kind of complaint. And they have not, um, had any issues that any of their deputies could remember had to do. The only one that Clay said is one time he had to go and help some college kids because they locked their keys in their car. So that's not really a complaint. Nope. Um, they did, I did, so I said, well, just out of curiosity, how many noise complaints do we have in the county just in general? And he said they had 50 noise complaints total into 2022 for the whole county. Um, none of which he could remember were related to it. But again, we don't really know if any of them had anything to do with, it, with an Airbnb. Um, so that was the, one, the other thing that was on my to-do list. And then I contacted DATCAP to find out how many um, DATCAP licenses have been issued in Richland County. And I can tell you, I actually have a full list of who they are. Wow. Um, let me... Um, it's not very many. Mm -hmm. So there are... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine facilities that have a tourist rooming house license issued from DATCAP. And I was a little confused because, Aaron, do you guys have a DATCAP license? Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I was like, I was looking, I was like, they must be on here. Nope. No. <laughs> so there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's only nine. There, there also gives you the list. There's one bed and breakfast and one, two, three, four, five, six that are classified as lodging five to 30 rooms. Um, so... I didn't think we had that many hotel-like things in, in Richland County, but we do when you start looking them in on a list. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's obviously not going to help us too much because clearly there are a lot of people who haven't even done the state-required licensing. So um, so that's just information you asked me to get, yeah. so I got it. Um, and then I think that's that was all the to-do list I had for questions we, st we still had on on um, what's happening in the county already. I haven't heard back from any of the municipalities as far as if they have ordinances relating to SDRs or anything. So, um, so I think now would be the time that we could start asking some questions of uh, Corporation Council. So one of the, th I'll just catch you up, Mike. Um, one of the things that we've been discussing a lot is really just, because when we looked at the DAT cap, rules, they really seem to pertain very specifically to the health and safety of the person renting, not the, not the neighbors, not the surrounding property. Um, it really just has to do with, you know, making sure that they tested their water and that they have a safe, they have fire extinguishers and smoke detectors and all of that stuff. So um, what we've been talking about is what do we need to do or like what would we do to make sure that we're protecting the neighbors as well, like good neighbor policies, I guess is what we've been calling them. So I went through and kind of looked at the stuff, everything that we've been talking about and came up with a short list. So I guess I'll start and then you guys can just chime in when, 
right. Okay, so, and so I guess what I want to know from you is like, do you see any issues with, like, is there any legal reason why we would not be able to, to do some of these things or any legal, or actually, do you have an opinion as to, just to start off with, as far as an ordinance on this, of this nature? Sure. Um, so I emailed it to you earlier. I, oh, I you did? You got it before the meeting. I did not. Um, last time we had discussed this issue, I, I told you about the town of Holland, and um, they're really the only entity that's faced litigation regarding this matter um that that is readily accessible at least um and at that last time i sent you the ordinance that i i could find that was the ordinance that caused the litigation i found today the amended ordinance um and i sent that to you i did hope. you send it to me uh and not anyone else yeah it was okay. just a response to okay. the email we were yeah so i think what I'll do then is I'll provide that to all of the community members for next the next meeting. We'll we can discuss it more. Um, and uh, the reason that that's important is that the amended ordinance was crafted during the litigation, and so they essentially brought in the plaintiffs and uh, heard all of their concerns and made a lot of changes to it. Um, and actually, one of the articles that you provided me uh, enumerates a lot of the changes that were made. Um, the original ordinance is about three pages. The amended one is eight. Um, there's a little bit of a difference in font, but that still shows a, a substantive change to it. Um, and it just took out some of the more offensive provisions and, um, so what know. did they get in trouble? Can you just summarize for us? What did they get in trouble for? Sure. Uh, so, um, they specifically eliminated any restriction on the number of days a property can be rented, yeah. restrictions on outdoor events on rental properties. The original ordinance limited them to one outdoor event and one event, like it, it couldn't last more than a day and it was from 7 to 10 p.m. Um, insurance coverage, minimum levels of insurance coverage. Um, they inserted a provision that allows proof of application for the DAT cap license to suffice for at least a temporary permit. Um, Wait, they they didn't have to do that. They they deleted that from their ordinance, yeah. or they're requiring their ordinance. They, they added, added that. Okay. So before um, you could not even apply for uh, the the. Oh, permit until you had your DAT cap license. Had the license. And now you at least have. You just have to show that you have applied but not necessarily been approved by right. DACAP. Okay. And so they can issue a temporary license pending pending a final office. approval of DACAP. Okay. Um and then uh removed a licensure requirement for property managers managers within the town. Um one thing that's not necessarily legal but I think is a really good decision is to they documented all the steps that someone could appeal. Um that's always helpful because you know you enumerate that in the ordinance itself or or in the guiding documents and then somebody who feels like they they got the wrong decision um knows uh how they can you know at least try what the steps are to appeal yeah okay uh clarified vehicle restrictions and then removed annual building and fire inspections requirements those are well, big do I those understand are that they, they removed um, having to have an emergency contact nearby? No, they, they just removed that person needing to be licensed. So the property itself required a license, but then also a property manager who would oversee that property had a separate license. Oh, that does seem crazy. Apply for. That's, that's definitely crazy. Okay. Um, the only other thing I will say is that um, I, I happen to have our zoning ordinance uh, for another matter, and I went through it. Um, and tourist homes are actually currently allowed under conditional use permits for at least two of the kinds of residential, single family residential. And right, because we added that language yeah. when the Jaeger place, that was part of the conversation with the Jaeger Lane, right? That's when we approved that. Yeah. But we are, I mean, this is, a, we are sort of interested because we have this hotel, motel thing out of town. 
and somehow we haven't figured out how to deal with that with because there was this thing where it was cheaper to have a motel or hotel than it was to have a, a VRBO, right? In our list. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we went through the listing and, and said uh, something about, um, not, maybe they didn't say motel or hotel. We had a whole thing about, and we said, well, we don't have any of those, you know, like con little convention centers or little. and Resorts? A what? resort fee or I, yeah yeah that was you know what I'm talking about Mike I'll no. go and find it next time yeah, okay sure. that sounds good yeah okay we'll have to refresh our memory on that one did it have to do with the fact that right now you they have to do a CUP in order to do that is that what you're talking about yeah and they had a different they had a no charge for the other and we have were making a big charge for the CUP for the VRBO. Yeah, resort. That's the word I'm looking for. Right, that was it. I'm sorry. I okay. didn't explain myself well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, was that where you? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I would so, like to so get let me, a sense of what you're looking. Yeah. To so get. let me let me just. And I'll, and if you guys, these are ones that I've been hearing from you, from myself, and from all of you. Right. So. If, if there's something that you think is crazy, then yeah. you chime in while I go. Okay, so the first one was having a local contact that's responsible for addressing the issue. We had talked about it being within an hour or within so many miles or something like that, but just making sure that there's someone, if there's an emergency, that can respond. They can't be like live four hours away and, and try to manage what's happening in Richland County. So that was one thing we talked about. Um, providing, making sure that there's parking that isn't on the road, so off-street parking. Mm -hmm. Um, was one that has come up. Um, we've talked about the number of guests being limited to what the private septic is coded for, or however you, what's, I don't know what the proper term would be for that. A septic is rated? So high score, so many bedrooms. Okay. So many people. Okay, so just making sure that they're not having 50 people in a house that's only intended, a septic that's only intended to provide, you know. Like actual renters. Yes, okay. overnight. I think it would be the number of people that are staying there. I, I mean, we'd have to make sure that language, that, that's something that you obviously would finesse as a legal person. Um, I don't know, we've talked about the, the question of a concern with ATV and UTT, UTV traffic. Um, I mean, we have an ordinance in the county for ATV and UTV traffic already. So I don't know that there should would need to be anything special. Um, we've talked about noise and you know having quiet time so like an established like you know on the weekdays 10 p.m to 7 a.m but on weekends it would be you know midnight you know quiet time after midnight until 7 or 8 a.m whatever um so that would and we haven't i mean we never really settled on yep. a time mr carroll yeah miss madam chair um back to the septic system oh yes Let, let's say i'm a homeowner and I'm not doing a VRBO. I'm just having a bunch of friends over for the weekend. They're going to camp in the yard, and there's there's plenty of right. Them. So does it make sense that we would try to do this? In yeah, a I would think that was problematic. Yeah, I mean, if this is just stuff we've talked about, yeah. and I don't have. I'm not wedded to right. any of these. So I'm just pushing back. Madam Chair, yeah. the difference is, is you might do that two times a year. They're right. renting this out. How many Every, how many days or how many? I mean, many they hope to be able to rent it out all the time. Yeah. So, so I yeah. guess my what I'm saying the wording needs to be a little careful. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? My wording is always careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's good, though. That brings up like yeah. the what we, I mean, I don't want to make these things crazy, but I do want to make sure that we're that, you know, we're just being s smart about it. Um, uh, we talked about that they would be, you know, that they would have either we, we said we talked about a CUP. But I don't know if that's what was the you sent me. Some counties are doing; they're not doing a CUP. What are other some counties doing? You'd forwarded me an email from some other county that was doing something. Let me see if I can find it for Mike. Mike, you had sent it to me. It was a forward from a, some sort of listserv that you're on, where they weren't doing a CUP; they were just approving. I think what they're doing is approving land use permits rather than a conditional use permit. 
the land use permit for us is a structure, not the use. Okay, so that wouldn't make sense for us. But they're getting rid of doing the CUPs and just letting them do it basically. Okay, and currently one other thing we've discussed is currently it's $500 for a CUP and that's one time thing. It's not an annual thing. It's just a one time unless they change it. Just right now it's in county, it's a one time deal. Like you just do it like in Saw County, that's every it's year. Yearly, so which I've, yeah, I saw that too. But so you my to question other counties, they're charging seven hundred and fifty dollars per hearing. Right. I just found out one county's charging twelve hundred dollars a hearing. Wow, that's great. Not so bad. Rockbridge Township? Okay. No so one of the questions we had is if all of our other CUP applications are five hundred, can we make this one different if we decided to make it less or more or whatever? I would, or should it be consistent? It should be consistent. If it's a conditional use permit application, then it shouldn't matter what it's for. It should just be. So okay. you could either create a short term rental license, which operates under a different principle than this conditional use permit, or yes, they all, right. all have. So instead of doing a CUP, we could create a license. Okay, and the the I think we should look into that and see if you advocate for that or not. Does that, does that make sense to you to, that we would do something like that just because we don't want to, we poten potentially don't want to charge people $500? Yeah. And be done with it. Yeah. And then with the conditional use permit, you already have all the enforcement measures built in. You, you're operating yeah. on the same zoning ordinance okay. that already mm -hmm. exists. I think, um, I, you know, I defer to you elected officials on on how you want to set the policy is is this a specific industry that you want to encourage in which case yes we would look into um you know a, a separate process for them um but if you're going to call it a conditional use permit i recommend you just have it operate the same as every other okay could go away So for this committee to decide, not me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yeah. But could couldn't we basically? I think what he's trying to say is is just have a a permit that's called short term rental permit or whatever we choose to call it and have its own price, whatever we pick there, and uh, all the information for that, like a one time short term rental permit. <clears throat> I think is what. Right. Come. But if we're going to just have a one time thing, then why not just do the CUP and have it be the same? I, I'm a little bit worried about setting a precedent that we're doing, you know, this amount for this kind of thing and that amount. I mean, it, but maybe that's appropriate. I, I don't know. Are we creating more confusion later down the road by making a different rule for short term rentals than we have for everything else? I mean, just think about the people who are applying for the CUPs and then hear that the short term rentals only have to pay $100. You can imagine what we're going to get here when they come in here and have to pay their 500. That's the only thing uh, that's the, what I'm thinking is it a potential. Well, whenever anyone applies for a CUP, they have. We have they have rules and restrictions that they must follow in their CUP, yeah. just like what we're talking about here. So I don't, I'm not understanding what your point. Well, lots of times we have a CUP that they have to do certain sort of uh, hedges around or we have to do all sorts of things to uh, protect the neighbors from what you're doing. I mean, we have a lot of things that go with the CUP. Right, Chair. Okay. Um, the, the thing uh, about a CUP is it's kind of a, um, each one is a unique situation. There, there, it's not like a, um, a group or a, or a, or a standard standard it's it's you know they're case by case whereas right if we want to have uniformity in the county for for uh, short-term rentals maybe it should be a separate way to treat it like like maybe a license a one-time fee so that everybody right. knows what the rules are instead of having to 
generate a CUP for every one of them. That's true. There is some simplicity sure, to that. Requiring the DAT cap with it, that's a little different too. Mm -hmm. Right. So one question I have for for council is like, so let's just say we we institute this ordinance or however it plays out. What we were discussing was we would give like we would say that all people operating in Airbnb or VRBO in Richland County has one year to come into compliance where they can apply for their DAT cap license and apply for their Richland County license, CUP, whatever it may be. Um, because how do we, because we, it wouldn't be fair to just implement this and then say anyone who is, you know, we, because I'm assuming we're going to say if you don't do this, there's going to be consequences, right? Because otherwise, what's the point? Um, so, what are your thoughts on how we handle getting people into compliance and um, and and what what would be our consequences? Uh, as to the first, I definitely favor non retroactivity when it comes to uh, enforcement measures against someone who did something that was legal at the time that they did it. Uh, so a, a grandfather clause or some period of time in which to come into compliance is, is perfectly sensible. Um, so you favor non-what? Non-retroactivity. So a law changing shouldn't allow you to then go back and punish someone for something they did while it was legal. However, they're supposed to be having a license right now. Yeah, they're not legal. They're, they're not legal because they don't have a state license. I don't know what the con consequences are with the state, though. Dead cat must not be running around trying to figure it out. Or people would, in Grizzly County would be. Assume, yeah. like most agencies, they're probably overworked. At some point, staff. yeah, at some point, they'll probably crack down on it, but who yeah. knows? Yeah. yeah. I, if someone hurts themselves in one of these, then I think we'll get That's a bump in enforcement. But, right. Um, as, as far as the consequences, um, that's a policy determination. Um, one recommendation I would make is to, um, as you know, there is a desirability to the one time application for a CUP, and I certainly understand that, but um, there needs to be a way by which the license or CUP or however you want to pursue this can be revoked for mm -hmm. repeat offenders. That's, yeah. And um, mm -hmm. one thing that they did put in here in the, the Town of Holland amendment is that they do recognize that that would be a government deprivation of a property interest and as such the people would have a due process uh right so we would need to create uh craft a essentially like a hearing um you know we would receive a complaint from someone who violated the terms a number of times we would have to call them before this committee or um, whichever committee or the whole board depending on how you want to set it up um, there'd have to be presentation of evidence, witnesses, et cetera. And only at that point could you then remove the license that you granted. But um, in terms of monetary penalties or anything like that, those levels are determined by, again, the elected officials. Okay. So do you think the town of Holland, did they clarify all of that language after, was that language that changed after they got Yep. In trouble. <laughs> uh, and and my recommendation, I, I I apologize that I didn't have this sooner, um, but basically my recommendation would be for the committee to read through this ordinance. Um, there's not really a copyright law when it comes to actual laws, so I can literally just go through and change Town of Hall into Richland County. Uh, right. But um, again, they they wrote this in the midst of being sued, and either their case got dismissed or they won it. So. Uh, this is the place I would start for sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and I don't, I don't know that we want to go quite as far as, I mean, I've I looked at the old one that you had sent in that it, I'm, we don't want to go as yeah. in depth and as far as they have, we really just want some basic protections for really in my mind. And I think we've talked about this was it's, you know, I'm not worried and I don't want to make this an onerous process for the people who are good owners and are doing a good job. But when we have problems, we want to have a recourse and without having something we have no recourse for a, an owner who is abusing and or just, you know, whatever, causing issues for either the people that live around them or whatever. So um, that's kind of why we are moving towards having something in writing. But I don't think we're not trying to, you know, beat down all the, the 
VRBO owners or Airbnb owners in the county. So I would like to make this as painless as possible for and I, the owners. But if you would like to do no, you have more I, than no, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, we were looking across the nation and it's a huge problem in a lot of places that are already highly tourist and uh, they're losing housing and all sorts of things. We want to encourage tourism here, uh, but we also want to encourage it in a positive fashion. And one of the things we said in the CUP, but it might be in the license, that you couldn't pass it on to the next owner unless they came in. So that's another consideration. I don't know if other people agree with that. But. That was one. It was my last one. Oh, I'm sure. I, no, you're fine. I'm fine. Thank you're you. fine. So did you do you have anything concerning from the ones we've listed off so far? Uh, no, I would have stopped you. Okay. Um, it, I guess there is no countywide noise ordinance. One of the things that the town of Holland ordinance does is, is tie noise complaints to its already existing noise ordinance. That's not something you necessarily have to do here. Um, do you know we for sure don't have one? I, I believe last time we discussed it, it was, I, I don't know for sure. No, I, I mean, have all the ordinances have been codified yet, so we could actually search all our ordinances. Not yet. Oh. They <laughs> experienced a delay that, um, it, they seem to found a, find additional motivation once Derek looped me into conversations. We'll say that. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, because that certainly would be nice to see if we have one on the books that we that nobody knows about. Because that <laughs> I've found to be true of some some ordinances that are buried very deep in the archives. Which there are a lot. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. My concern with a, a quiet time ordinance specific to, to conditional use permit or short term rentals rather is, um, and, and Supervisor Caro raised this point, um, essentially we don't want to, we need to balance how a private owner would be able to use their property yeah. versus how uh, someone who's renting it is, is able to. Um, and so if there's not a countywide noise ordinance, it's very difficult to say that because you're only because you're in a rental, state. you have to be quiet. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's absolutely true. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think we want to be restricting outdoor events because I know some people use them as venues and, you know, as far as, so I, I think, and that's okay. I think we want to be able to let people do that. Um, so. All right. Any other questions? Uh, are there other items that I missed that anyone, was there other things that we thought were important to, to include potentially in You have to use the mic. All right. So the question was, um, if someone, if, if there's, if an ordinance needs to be enforced, who's going to be enforcing this ordinance? Correct. Right. Okay. Would you like to take that? Sure. Uh, so the short answer is it depends. Um, there are a couple different ways. I mean, it could be a criminal fine. Um, you know, theoretically, depending, it could rise to disorderly conduct or something along those lines. Uh, I think more likely it would be a civil forfeiture process, uh, similar to a zoning citation, as that process already exists. Because um, we would not be going after the people, like, making the noise. Like, we would not be involved in that process. That would right. be the sheriff's responding to a complaint. But what we're talking about is if we were ever going to revoke their CUP, then it would come through. Yes. And that, work with you in this body. So I guess it, it depends on what kind of enforcement mechanism that is it being pursued. If we're talking revocation of the license, then it would be properly this committee uh, that I think would be empowered to do so. Um, if there's like the issuance of a warning prior to initiation of those proceedings, then I think that would come from either my office. No, come from my office, I guess. <laughs> um, but in terms of like a monetary forfeiture that would again need to come through like a citation which, yeah because if there was anything criminal going on like well if there was a noise ordinance for the county the sheriff's department would respond to a noise complaint and then they would reference that ordinance as their reason for so i wonder what they do i should i didn't ask the sheriff he when i asked him how many noise complaints they get i didn't ask him what they're enforcing or what they're doing they must i, I imagine they just show up and say please be quiet and then i mean they'll issue tickets yeah, and they, they don't issue tickets or anything, but 
um, if we don't have a noise ordinance, what would they be enforced? They wouldn't be able to issue a ticket, correct? Not unless it rose again to the level of like disorderly, disorderly conduct, conduct, right? Or and you'd have to have, be able to identify an individual. Or underage drinking, which is probably the other thing they're responding to. <laughs> if there's a noise. I'm a little surprised you didn't get a response from uh, Lone Rock because I did. I did go to their uh, talk to one of their county board members, or excuse me, their village board members, who was also their fire chief. Yeah, and basically they refer everything to law enforcement if there's a, some sort of a violation, whether in, in the village or the, or the right. violation of fireworks uh, late or in a, a fire, uh, a high fire rated area, that all goes to law enforcement. Yeah, they, they have not responded. But they didn't so respond. Not yet. No. Some of them may not have had their meetings yet, so they might have it on their agenda for their next meeting possibly. I mean, some of the townships, too, haven't gotten back. Quite a few of them didn't, and they probably right. will be talking about it at um, their next meeting, potentially. Yeah, so I think yeah. if we give them a couple of... Yep. Yes. Okay, um, I, Madam Chair. I guess I would just end on that note um, that, again, you don't have to do anything. You could just leave it to right. municipalities yep. themselves. Right. Okay, Madam so, Chair. Yes. Um, you had asked if there was anything else that yeah. we had discussed. Mm -hmm. One thing we did discuss is what he had mentioned is fireworks. I didn't know. We yeah, you know, fireworks is a further it's discussion, a but I thought touchy about that one. you mentioned that. I mean, that happens. They get complaints about fireworks. He, um, they have, that has an own, its own special category in the sheriff's department. Yeah, and, and there's and there's state what, laws that that actually yep. um, dictate that, but they are allowed to choose how to enforce it was what I was, they choose, they can enforce with discretion was yes. I think the words he used, the sheriff used when I asked him about the fireworks. So I don't know that we would tie, again, I don't know that tying this to a fireworks thing makes much sense when that would be enforced as its own. Because you have to recognize that the property owner is going to have limited control over the right. Um, he can tell them, like, yeah, like you can tell them not to do that, right? But then they may do it. And what is the lower stars on their VRBO rating, or however those work? Yeah. The only the only thing I'd like to add to that is is it's against the law in Wisconsin, obviously. But some of these people could be renting from another state where it's legal, right? So maybe they need maybe what we need to say is we just have to that like the owner would just post a a description of. Right. Local, I don't know. Because some people aren't going to know what the local laws are. They they're from Illinois. They come up here and stay, and they don't could be different down there. Well, don't know what the example I'm thinking of is fireworks in Illinois, and you can somebody buy it. it's legal in in <laughs> Illinois. It's legal in Michigan. You know, somebody brings a pound of Alcapulco gold and mm -hmm. <laughs> tries to have some fun. The neighbor catches a waft, and the sheriff shows up. You know, that yeah. it's not any less illegal uh, just because. But did. the owner is not culpable for. It. But the owner, well, are so that that is actually an question. interesting because then are they facilitating a, a home for um, you know drug use, and that might trigger some other stuff. Oh my goodness! I think that would be a, a, an exercise in discretion, um, but that just got my that. law nerd thing. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> um, okay, so why don't we why don't we why don't we read the the Holland or ordinance? I'll make sure that that gets put in our folders, um, and. And then we can discuss that. I don't know if we necessarily need Mike the next time. Do we want to have like where we can just talk about what's in it and what we or, and then we'll decide what our next steps where we want to go from there. Sounds good. And by then I should have more response from the rest of the towns. Um, okay. Do we want to? Why don't we do the? Na I'm going to skip the dark skies and go to number ten because that then Mr. Window would be done and could go home. Um, so, okay, just a reminder, we are supposed to be a committee of seven, and we are only a committee of six because the seventh member is by state statute chapter 92, supposed to be a representative from FSA, Farm Service Agency. And last year, a year and a half ago, FSA decided that they were did not want their representative to be on county conservation committees. And so they instructed their people not to come. <laughs> and so we've been a member short since then. Um, yeah, they don't, they did, no, other than they just don't want the Some, FSA. I, I can respond to that a little bit. Somebody in another county, uh, a county, the F, 
the person that was representing FSA said he was representing FSA. They had a thing on the board thing that said he was an FSA representative and made some comments or just, and it made other people controversial, controversial and that's how it started. So as far as that's what I was told. So one person ruined it for everyone else. Just like that's the way of it. Uh, Madam Chair, I do have an answer if that would be helpful. Yes. To that. Uh, and your answer is uh, 5 CFR section 2635.702, use of public office for private gain. Essentially, the legal argument behind their non-participation is that by specifically naming them FSA representatives, if they show up, they are at least presenting the perception that they are acting in their official capacity as an F FSA representative. And that kind of um, provides a, a, like the federal government signs off on then what you're doing, um, which the federal government doesn't necessarily want to have happen to every single county board committee in Wisconsin, for example. So, um, Excuse me. yes, yes. So if yes, they voting position something mm -hmm. that was beneficial for them or and so uh, the federal government is very vague as to what the penalties for violation of that law is but um i understood as soon as i no and so um so are, that's i will just tell what i will tell you is that at the statewide level counties across the state so far have been choosing to to handle this in many different ways some people are just ignoring it and only having six people on their they keep that spot there but it's just vacant um some counties are appointing another um like a farmer rep into that just a local citizen farmer into that some counties have put um another supervisor on the committee to fill that slot um so the reason I asked our, our corporation counsel to be here is because they really recommend that we that that he review it and decide for him like for our county he needs to decide what officially how we want to respond. I will also tell you that the Wisconsin Land and Water Association is currently working with several senators, Senator Balwig and a couple others, to very, very carefully just tweak because they're afraid to open up chapter 92 to anything other than changing the language. And so what they're trying to do at the state level is change that statute language to say uh, farmer, citizen, citizen farmer represent, and then and using the USDA definition, USDA definition of what qualifies as a farmer. USDA Department of Ag definition, definition of, what, of a, what, what agriculture, what a, a, an agricultural person is. So that, but it hasn't happened yet. So in the meantime, and who knows how long it'll be, when and if that change might happen. So in the meantime, we need to determine what to do with our seven member committee that's only six members. So I will hand it over to you, Court Fisher Council. Sure, so um, the Wisconsin Counties Association actually reviewed this and provided guidance on it. Um, the statute is, is inarguable. The county board shall appoint to the Land Conservation Committee a person who is the chairperson of the County Farm Service Agency Committee, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so the recommendation by the WCA that I share is make the appointment and understand they're never going to show up. Um, it would just be a six-person committee. That does raise the question of quorum. Um, and what we still need four, no matter what, though, if we're if we're seven member committee, don't we need four, whether we're six or because doesn't it have to be more than 50%? Yep. So, so we can't be three, we'd have to be if we were a six person committee, we still have to be four, right? Yep. Yeah, so I don't think that matters so much. Then I'd say that we just leave it as it is. Okay. All right. And we'll just see what happens. I mean, once they change the language in the statute, then we can do whatever the statute language says yes so yeah. you're actually saying we should pick a person uh, you have to uh, in but order for the county wouldn't to that person feel like if if somehow the litigation went is to that, us wouldn't they be is fsa allowing us to appoint a trouble? person i don't I mean, quite understand about how this person's name would be <laughs> well fsa can't stop us from appointing someone but um we as a country had a very vigorous debate over forcing someone to do work and uh, <laughs> so I think we came to a conclusion on that one. And so <laughs> Might have been a, yeah, we'll we have to, uh, <laughs> that's why I say make the appointment and then just understand that they're 
because so, I, theoretically they're risking fines or jail. I don't know what the enforcement is, what, but they what FSA is saying them. that they're doing yeah. federal statutes. So, so how would we do that, Kathy? Well, I don't. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, we could say I could say. Oh, can like, we just say it's vacant though? What if we just say it's vacant? Like, what if we can't get someone? Wait, we're not going to, we're appointing them, but they have to say it's okay, but they're not going to show up, and then they're legally responsible in some way. I'm confused by that. So, legally speaking, these are mutually exclusive uh, positions. Uh, so, we, the county board, shall. There's no if, ends, or buts about it. We have to make the appointment. That's what we need to do in order to ensure the county's statutory compliance. The FSA guidance and potentially applicable federal law says that they shan't serve on these kinds of boards. Um, and the chairperson or their designee will have to make that decision for themselves. But we have to. Of the FSA? I don't know. Okay. Right now. I don't know right now. I haven't. So you this can find that. About, I'm just not. Okay, so we don't even actually need a name. You can just appoint. You could just say the point the FSA chair. FSA okay, chair. The county farms. Oh, unless, but that. unless the chair okay. names a designee. And how do so we need our county board chair? Is that our rules now? Is the county board chair appoints people to committees, right? Yes. So we need Marty Brewer. Yes. To appoint and just say FSA chair for Richland County FSA Richland County chair, right? Because it's the county one, right? The county level mm -hmm. FSA group. Um, so how do we get that request? How do I make that request? Who do, who makes that request? Uh, do I just tell? I think you tell him and then he does it at the county board and, and, and of all those committees and stuff, maybe. Yeah, I'll just shoot him an email. Okay. And, and could you kind of give me that information so I could put, give it to the, uh, Joanne Cooley, the. Is she the FSA representative in the, no, she's the. She's a county executive director for Farm Service Agency, and just let her okay. know this is what's going to happen by law. We ha we have to, but they don't have to show up. Right? Can they reject it? And then, if if they do, can does that mean we still met our re we, requirement? We appointed them, but, right? You know, if and I, I just tell her that's what's happening because legally we have to appoint, and it's going to say FSA chair, and you're just not going to show up. And, right? Yeah, we and, don't know what. I'm is. happy to meet with them and explain this if that would be helpful or. Yeah. I, okay. All right. So you're going to make contact with the FSA oh, people, oh, and right. you're going to let Clint or someone know that we have to appoint them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an FSA representative. <laughs> I, I thought old tractors were less valuable, so that shows you how much uh, I know about farming. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else on that then? All right. Well, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. And we will be back in touch when we when we move further along with the STR stuff. Okay, that brings us to the dark sky initiative. Um, so I got some new graphics from Scott. I always want to say his wrong name. Um, so I will and I just have not had a time to mess around with the brochure. But so my my thought is I am going to update the graphics and then Bring it back here and make sure everybody, I guess, likes the final product. And then we'll just assume that we'll include it with any new applications. Um, I do know that, like, um, in Ontario, they're sending it out with their utility bills. They're sending out the brochure. So Scott used my pamphlet, tweaked it, and he gave it to the Ontario people, and they're sending it out to um, everyone's water bill. So I don't know if this is something we can or want to, we'd have to look at cost for making co color copies. I don't, do we have a color printer in the county? Why, well, yes, there's several in the county. So, but do we, like, do we charge per page? Like, how, or is it just the paper? Like, how, how what would- I'm billed per page of color. Okay. And what's that, what's that rate? Do you know it offhand? Well, the color, what we charge is in the office 25 cents a copy. I have to go. I think the shopping news is cheaper than that. <laughs> I just printed some. I'll have to go look. Okay. Well, we can figure that out later. I'll bring the final product and we can figure out how. I mean, I mean, for sure, you can make a few copies to distribute with permits. Well, it's per ordinance, 25 cents a copy. 
So we'll go ahead and go wherever you want to, but I'm just saying that's what the ordinances read. For making copies of, and, okay. Yeah. Open um, records law. Oh, that's when, you're talking about when, when people well, request any office copies makes a copy. for, for a citizen? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Carroll. I, I, I would assume that for county purposes, that would not be the same fee, but uh, I just wanted to add that I, uh, in talking to Scott, he's, he's gone and surveyed all the county facilities. Oh, that was my next thing. Yeah. You've already talked to him? Or? Oh. Uh, no, I just knew that he was doing the survey because um, I was getting all the emails. So he, sur he did survey all of the county buildings. Uh, he went through during the day to look at all of them, and then it came back at night to, wow. to evaluate. I know, all for free, which is amazing. He's pretty nice. Um, and so we'll be, I'm assuming maybe by next time we'll have information on that. Will he be coming to the meeting too? I, I don't know. Maybe you uh, know? He, he would if we asked him to. He's, he's, just, you know, he's really dedicated to this, this issue. But I, I just want to mention that, he was really impressed with Pine Valley. He said they're doing it right. Oh, awesome! Yeah, and, but he is. He is working on a report. There's a lot of lot of stuff to turn out. Awesome. Okay. And then the other little tidbit, just because I keep bringing it up, I got the electric company. I, well, I didn't actually had an electrician come and turn my light off, my yard light off, <laughs> and, and now I have a and I have a motion sensor one on our garage now instead. <laughs> it's really dark out. <laughs> And our, I'm so used to be able to look out and see our whole yard, and now I can't see anything. So it's a little, it's freaking me out a little bit, but, um, but I did finally do that. So that's all I had on on the dark skies thing. So I think, yeah, if if he is wants to come back and give us the report on how we're doing as a county and where what and what, well, what our next step might be if we decide to do something further, we'll just see what he has to say about the rest of our buildings. Okay, anything else on that? All right, that brings us to Assistant Zoning Administrator sanitation, Sanitarian position. So you last time you had advertised it for two weeks. Did you do another two weeks? I didn't do another two weeks yet. Trying to figure out what's going on because I only had two applicants. Right. Went to the conference just last week and pretty much a lot of counties have the same issue. They can't get anyone. They apply, they put in papers, no one's applying. Well, we're certainly not going to get anyone if we don't advertise, right? Like, we have no hope of getting anyone if we don't, if they don't know there's an opening, right? Right, we can apply, but what does the county want to do? I mean, do we want to keep on spending money or go on Indeed? Or, I mean, I put on another county website, or not a county website, but WCCA website. And we're putting it out there. Is it out on Indeed right now? I don't know if it's still on there or not. I mean, that's, but... The deadline date was March seventeenth, so I don't know if she took it off or if it's still there. But um, does it? Do, how much does it cost for us to have it up on Indeed? Does anybody know? You know, for how long? No. Well, I mean, we're certainly not going to get applicants if the job's not posted somewhere. So it's okay with the committee just keep on applying. So how much does it cost us every time it's in the paper? I think it's a hundred something. And we've only done it once for two weeks? This time. In the local papers. Right. And it's on Indeed, and it's on the county website. Is it on the county website? I'm assuming it's on the county website. Karen's in charge of the county website, I thought. <coughs> I haven't looked lately to see if it's there, but I assume it's there. Let's see. Okay, well, obviously we should have it. And is it, can it? It can is it, it is. It's not on the. We would need to change the deadline on it. Can it possibly be on the home page? No jobs are on the home page. They don't do jobs on the home page. Where do you find jobs? Why is it so hard? Where are the jobs? It's under employment. The tab oh, there the it is. There's the tab. That makes sense. Didn't see that. I mean, if I'm going to advertise again, I wanted to say until filled. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. Until filled. Oh, until. Until filled. Okay, so let's let's do Indeed. Make sure it's on Indeed. Um, it's on our website. I would say let's do one more round in the paper. Is that just the observer? Correct. Anyone else have thoughts on this? Um, I have a couple. Um, the last time when um, that gentleman was here and he said in Platteville they got like 10 yeah. applications. 
how about doing it in the Platteville paper, advertising there? And I don't know how much I don't know how much it costs there. It's got to be probably similar to ours, but it's just a thought. Um, <clears throat> Widen the net a little bit. Yep. And then the other thing is is what type of training do these people have to have, and where do they get it? Because maybe we could advertise wherever that is. Well, Pouts is a private on-site wastewater treatment systems, and that's uh, state's test. So they would have. It's to not really a class, though, right? It's just a test you have to take right. you online. Study it and learn it. Yeah, you get a book, test. you study, you take the test. There's no class you can take for that, right? No, nothing that's mm -hmm. yes. It's and, it, and it's tough. I tried it once. I got past half of it. I've just I've got a degree in soils. It's not easy. So that's part of it. It's it's it may take you four, five, six times to maybe get your license. Okay. And to be a certified soil tester, that's another license that you got to learn and know that's your soils. Which you do independently. Correct. And what about zoning? Um well I mean I think college classes, there's some zoning, but I mean, there's not much you got to learn on the job. It's not like there's a degree in zoning. Right. Right. There's a lot of zoning in history. Yeah. So yeah, all no. are kind of independent with really no place of where you could advertise, per se, unless it's the county. Which well, is what you're so when you're saying zoning, I mean, you're thinking just a zoning ordinance, but then you've got your floodplain ordinance, you've got your shoreland ordinance, you've got your airport ordinance. I mean, there's a bunch of ordinances. It's just not, is it 35 acres you less, you zone it to something else. It's... There's a lot of different ordinances right. out there for zoning. And so do we say in the description that that experience is not necessary and will train? Or what, what do we say the requirements are? I think the requirements was that you had to have it within six months of being hired. You had to have your POTS or whatever. Oh, it's certified. 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 Gotcha. Mr. Carroll? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure it would help to, to uh, advertise in the local paper again. I'm just trying to think where else we can cast our net that we haven't thought of yet. Um, I don't know what this indeed thing is, but it, like in you're saying, there's got to be a few other ideas where we can try likely likely spots. But I, I you know, the local paper does not have a huge uh, huge coverage for the people that would have the qualification. I don't think. But what paper would? Sounds like Platteville. <laughs> yeah, it's a long way well, away, so With Platteville, that was for the GIS position. Oh, that's true. That's true. Now, talking that's to people from Grant County, they had theirs in the Platteville paper, and they said they only got one application, and they lucked out because there's a master plumber that was looking not to have to work on weekends. I, I was not so much thinking of a paper as there may be some professional association or some other type of, of way to get, get the folks. Well, I think you said you posted it on the... WCCA page, which is Wisconsin County Code Administrators. I mean, that's probably as lot as professional. And it's still there then. It's it's. I took it off after March seventeenth. Oh. So you want to put it back up there? Does that one cost? No. Why don't you put it back up there and say until filled? Until. Yeah, I mean, we can't hire. It, we're never going to be able to find anyone if we don't advertise. So we certainly need to get it out there. Um. So Indeed, so make sure it's on Indeed, put it back on the WCCA, you said? Um, and change ours to until filled. Until filled, change the language so, until filled. Do they have to have a lot of experience with Jeff? He, the pouch is a hard test, and yes, you need a lot of experience to know when you're looking at plumbing, how it all works. Yeah. And the soils, I mean, it's kind of not like looking at manure and all that stuff. I mean, you have to know what type is clay, Silky loam, was, color textures, and all that stuff. I don't know if Southwest Tech College has like a little, you know, newspaper or something because they have, might have graduates that this might need something that they might be interested in or something. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they don't. There's the problem is is there's there's licenses they have to get, but there's not like a certificate, like a two year degree or anything like that that you could pull students from. Yeah, which is what I was thinking earlier about where the training was. Yeah, and, <clears throat> but maybe um, plumbing and soils, maybe I don't know. I don't. Well, let's just at least get it out there. Um, I guess 
I mean, I was trying to think, well, does the Baskerville dial have more circulation? I don't think so. Or the Muscadet Progressive? I don't think so. So those papers aren't yeah. going to help. It would just be different people seeing yeah. the paper. Which right. is, but he was saying, you know, we've already put it out there. And does the crop, that? like, I know that they're all owned by the, mm -hmm. like the Crawford Independent and Baskerville Dial and the Muscadet Progressive are all owned by the same company. Can you advertise in one and get it all three? Or four, or is it you just you have to pay for each one? Pay for each one. Pay for the deal. I don't even know if there's any deal. Yeah, I don't know. I guess the question is, is that we don't put money in the budget for advertisement, so. Well, the position is open, so we're not spending the money to pay that person. Well, I'm just looking at so, the line item, so. Right, but I think we can. Yeah. Department is getting trouble for when they spend more money that's in the budget, so that's on that line item. Well, I don't know about how it's done here in the past, but when I'm, so I, I look at budgets in public safety all the time and we do, I mean, I do ask questions about when a certain line goes over, but at the end of the year, I look at the bottom line to say, did you over or underspend your budget as a whole, not picking at each individual line? Because sometimes you have to take money from here to pay for here just because that's just the way it works out that year. So, and we're the ones that are gonna be looking at your budget. So in detail at that, so the position is open, so I think we should use the, some of the money that we're saving in that position to find a new person. Um, unless you want to be a one-man show, I'm guessing not, right? <laughs> the ship is sinking. It don't matter now with me. Uh, well, let's let's do what we can. So, I mean, I, I, I think we should, we could pick one of, like, I don't know, whichever one has the best circulation. Is that the dial? Find that out. It used to be, because they used to run the local teams that we pick up but i don't know anymore <laughs> that's funny <laughs> i mean i know in my area the basketball dial everyone around like yeah. everything local in the southern yeah. part of the yeah. county goes through the basketball dial or the muscadet progressive but so i just have a question for mike yeah. do you have any other suggestions of where we could post it like i said the main one that i know was wcca and like i said a lot of counties got the jobs out there mm -hmm. no one wants to work so everyone wants to work from home yeah, so indeed, obviously, basically on our website, that website, and then if we can think of another paper to, to get it in, otherwise, no other ideas as far as where we could put it. Nothing really, because I mean, like I said, talked to the counties last week and everyone's in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Any other spot is, you know, I can send it through, because some of the land, Wisconsin land and water they'll post, they'll send it out to the, all the counties too. So, I mean, it won't hurt and that's free. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we we have to keep advertising it. We can't, we're never gonna fill it if it's not out there. So let's get it out wherever we can. Um, do we wanna make a motion to send it to a, Let's just say the Baskerville dial, just to see if that nets us anything. For so it would be, a, is it usually a two week? Usually do two weeks. Madam Chair. Yeah. Does this committee need to make that decision, or is, is we can just tell them to do it? I mean, I'm just saying, do we want to give it in the form? Do we want to tell them to do it in the form of a motion, or we can just tell them to do it? I would say just as a motion. Yeah. Okay. It's not a policy thing. Okay. It's it's, it's something that needs to be right. done. Right. So. I mean, I, I think the basketball, I mean, I guess we could look up circulation maybe, but I would say the basketball dial would be a one to, to try. We can at least capture more people from Grant County. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, that's got the the, heavy, the biggest population, it's got the biggest population. So if we're gonna spend some money, I mean, Platteville seems a little too far away. I, I'm not sure people are gonna wanna drive an hour or more up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I was just thinking of that other position, I guess, yeah. is what no, I that was, was thinking was, of. That was GIS. That was so. GIS, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what was the pay on that? You know? I don't know. That was, he just mentioned at that meeting that, this meeting that we were at, that he advertised in the um, Platteville paper and got like 10 or 12 applicants. So I don't know what the pay was. Are you talking about Troy Maggie? Yeah. Southwest? Yeah. He yeah. had 17 applicants for oh, their okay. GIS. It was a lot. It was a lot. 17 applicants for their GIS position. Yeah. And I meant to ask them what the what their pay rate was, and I will find that out for next time. Um, um okay. So
So that brings us to land conservation secretary position. Tammy is retiring, right? Tammy is retiring in November. And I guess the big thing, I've been kind of mentioning it to Mike. Next year, supposedly through the budget, it's going to be a half-time position. Yep. And I'm not worried about that part of it. It's more hit Mike's end of it. You know, if they have, we get somebody, we don't get somebody, is it something to think about? Now the budget is coming out. And I don't want to use up his budget money, but maybe being a split position, like half time land conservation, half time zoning, sec, you know, secretary to be there to. It's just, it's an idea. I have something to think about. It's no decision today, it's something to think about budgetary wise, and then make it a full position, time position. But I don't know. I'm not going to step on Mike's toes, but. Right, no, I, and we've had this conversation before. So, um, I, as you all remember, what we agreed to as a committee was that the budgets for the their department was going to go down to a half-time administrative assistant position. Um, I had too thought that since the two, the two departments are combined, that if we're gonna contract the GIS work, that means there's still not a body in the office, and so, to handle day-to-day -day customers and things like that. And so, um, you know, we will be saving some money with the contract GIS regardless of who we go with. And would we use a little bit of that money to have this position be helpful? And then it makes it easier to hire too as far as it being a full-time versus a half-time position. So that is something that we should, as we move into budgets, should and, be thinking and about. That person will have to be, if, they, if that does go in fact, you know, Mike would have to train him on, you know, the basic permit process, yeah. Just intaking that sort of thing. So when Mike's out in the field or whatever. Right, so that there's someone to answer questions, basic because questions. Because I, like, he was gone to a conference the end of last week, and why isn't he in there? He's never in there, blah, blah, blah. He's a one-man office. <laughs> right, so you guys are fielding frustrated customers. Right, right. and it's not anybody's fault. It's just, I mean, it is what it is. It is, yeah. is what it is, and it's what you explain to him. He's a one-man office. He can only do so much. So. Right. I think that's good planning to figure that out. And that's why you're combined to figure different things right. out. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was always thinking that it, uh, we, when we first agreed to the half position, in my mind, I was thinking that as we're rearranging this whole office, that um, that, that position may stay intact to handle, because they would always be in the office. That way they can handle all of the telephone calls. They can be, you know, directing traffic to whatever the appropriate person within that office is. So we'll have to see how the numbers fold out though, because we do have to maintain whatever we said we were gonna do um, for our budgetary numbers. So we'll have to see how that all works out. Mm -hmm. So November what? So we wanna have this position filled probably, we should be advertising it before her actual last day. Does she have payout and stuff though? So does that mean we can't fill it till January? Oh, good Lord. I don't know. Um, she's taking. Some, I don't know how it's going to work. As a, she'll have like five weeks of vacation, then she'll have some sick leave time. That before. So are, it, are you encouraging her to use utilize that before she actually retires? Well, her vacation time she won't get until October, which is about two weeks before she's retiring. Okay. So she's looking. Oh, that's like, right. Our vacation time is tied to your hire date, right? Yeah, and hers is in October. So she's looking or looking ugh, liking. Sorry. Looking like her last day will be like the that first week of partial week in November. Like she's looking at November first to be the last day. Okay. Or November third. All right. Last. Well, let's keep that. Let's just keep an eye on that. And um, well, I mean, because the other part is that I would say we can ask our administrator how like can we fill it before she's gone or do we have to wait? I'm assuming we need to wait till she's actually gone. But then do we have to wait until her payout is all done? Because that's so what's happened that's in what other departments. With Ken. There's no, it's a policy, it's not a rule. I can't explain it. But we, because we <laughs> waited after Kenny left before you we could waited, fill it again. Yeah. Six but months. if we could advertise it, okay, say where, however we do this position, whether it's half time or full time, if we could advertise it like in, say, December, inter interviews in January, uh, at least they, we would say the start date would be, ex, you know, this, you would determine when this, work with administration would be determining when the start date would be. Okay. Yeah, All right, sure. well, yeah. Does this mean the position, the, the job description needs to be drafted and changed? 
if, if we're going to change the responsibilities and the and the percent, well, even if we were going to change the percent time to half time, we'd have to change the job description. Yeah. So yeah, we should start working on that this summer. Yeah. And then my question is: is how many years has she been with the county? Thirty. She she's been at least thirty. She was because she's one of them that got a thing at the. Okay. County board meeting last right. meeting. Right. So we should do some sort of recognition for her, like they've done with other people who have retired. I would assume that needs to start in this department or in this committee. So yeah. So in be? probably like October, usually we wait till after they've actually retired, and then the county board does a resolution recognizing yeah. that. And that would be the service. December meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Okay. Um, anything else on that? That brings us to 13, the GIS contract. So I just got an email this morning from Clint. Um, MSA has has finalized the um, process of how things flow with GIS in the county. I just got it today, though, so I haven't had a chance to even really dive into it. So I will forward that flow chart and all of the information to all of you for the next meeting, and mm -hmm. we can discuss that in detail at that time. Uh, Yes. Sorry. Let me talk into a mic oh. just so that for the recorded. We aren't making any decisions or discussing MSA versus any other contract at this time. If that's what you're going to talk about. So I need to come back. Oh. Probably. I mean, I guess if you want to, I mean, it is on here. The GIS contract is on here as an item. So. Uh, Add your mic down, please. So is it? It might be underneath. I've been here seven months. I'm the property lister, um, and I have worked with G with the GIS technician and the other people. And I just wanted to let you know what type of job they have done for me. I mean, they are. When You're talking I, about MSA, to be clear. Yes, yeah. MSA, and I have worked with Kelvin most of the time. And when I have an issue and I have a question, it, it pretty much he drops the stuff he's working on to help me. And and that promotes my job, makes my job go faster, um, makes it correct. And he's very um, knowledgeable. He helps me with questions I have because I haven't done the mapping process for a long, you know, very long um, but I can't say enough about their whole group. I mean, they have been very um, tentative. He has finished my splits, which makes my tax deeds go faster, um, being correct. If we have issues with a question, I ask him. He right away comes back to me with an answer. I mean, I can't say enough about them. So you haven't had any experience working with like Southwest Regional Planning GIS people at all yet, though, right? Not yet. Okay. No. And um, today I submitted a um, two course credit course for GIS mapping for my next year's budget. So I am going to start learning the basics. So. So where are you learning that at? So that's through um, a technical college in northern Wisconsin. Oh. I found it on their um, website, and they offer it come spring. Okay. So I'm just thinking, but that's kind of far away. <laughs> yeah, that's a ways We're away. Advertising. Is it, but at yeah. least Northern Lakes, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we we'll, we we'll aren't to the point. Really what we're trying to do is just get an, an RFP written that actually outlines exactly what we need from a contract GIS company. And so far we've had two people interested, which is MSA and South Regional Planning Commission. So it's good to know that, I mean, and I think we've heard that from Mike and other people that, that we have a good working relationship with MSA. So good. Um, well, I think we've got it all figured out with the... Clint and his, I mean, they've gone through a lot of effort to figure out. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, for, thank you Julie. For your, um, so we'll be talking about that in more detail next time. Um, public comments? Anyone? I think we had enough public. We did have quite a bit of public comments today. Uh, future agenda items. I think we've still got yeah. a lot on our plate, but is there anything else new that we want to talk about, Kathy? 
Well, I won't put asterisk on unless she'll be back. I think with the, is it right if I can, depending on what is cheaper or um, as far as renting or whatever, or do you want me to bring that back for the mowing? So that would be our May, and our next meeting isn't the normal Monday, right? That's not one that's adjusted. It's right. the end, it's the June one that gets adjusted. Yeah, July. Oh, it's the July one. Okay. Um, do we want to know what she hears back from the mowing, or do we want her to just move forward with whoever is the lowest or most economical yes. solution? Yes, Mr. I, I don't think I need to hear. As long as we make it clear we, we'd like to see them try to do bids, I, I'm good after that. Okay, and you can maybe just report back to us what what you decided and why yep. you decided that the next time. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, anything else? All right, that brings us to 16, adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right, motion by Carol, second by Carol. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Neither opposed to adjourning. <laughs> All right.